People have been asking me for years, is Luminar available for the iPad? And the answer has always been no. That is, until now. I happily run Luminar Neo on my PC, so why on earth would I want to run Luminar on a much less powerful device? Well, one word, freedom. Freedom to be able to get away from my desk, be out in the field taking photos wherever I'm working and actually be able to process my photos right here on my iPad. Let's explore this app together, but before we do, I've got to mention that stick around to the end because there are three very good points I need to share with you as to why this might not be a good fit for you. Because for sure we want to look at the capabilities of Luminar for iPad, but you also need to know the limitations so that you can make an informed decision as well. Okay, let's load up a photo in Luminar and I'll show you the rather surprising interface. On the left hand side over here we have access to all of our photos and there's different ways to access those. You have your own albums that you can create but the far easiest way is just to jump straight into the photos and Luminar links straight into your Apple Photos collection. From there you can just choose a photo that you want to work on. And straight away welcome to the really cool interface that we now have here inside of Luminar really graphical, really intuitive way to work. I really enjoy this, not just functional, it's a lot of fun as well. So inside of the develop tool, we have all of our essential tools just for getting the photo looking good. But what I'd recommend, because we're ideally working from a point of view of speed, being away from the office, just out and about, check out Enhance AI because this tool intelligently looks at your photo and will make adjustments based on exposure, contrast, color, all of the essential processing that you would want to do to a photo to get it looking good at a foundational level. So by toggling off and on with the tool, just by tapping this power button here, we can see our before and after with that particular tool. But let's say we do wanna just dive into the develop, which I would strongly recommend if you wanna finesse your edit we have the ability to brighten and darken the exposure. And any tool that we're changing, you can see that we actually have a numerical representation over there as well. So as well as using these lovely dials, we can get a really precise reading of where we're setting things. So that's actually really nice. So the highlight shadows, whites and blacks, along with the exposure itself, allow us to control the dynamic range and the brightness in our photo. Just above here, we've got the ability to change the temperature of our photo, so we can cool it right down. We can add some magenta or green. You can push this wherever you want. And if you make a change and you don't like it with any tool, all you need to do is just double tap it and it resets. So that's really nice. Now this squiggly line down here, what is this? This is the contrast. And the fact that we get this kind of flatlining effect as we take away the contrast, I really appreciate those design elements. It's just a really nice fun way to work that's a lot more intuitive than just moving a slider around. This visual representation, it just makes the tools understandable at a glance and also kind of fun to use, which is great. Now, rather than adding contrast here, what I actually prefer to do is reduce the contrast initially because there's a better way to bring contrast in. And by bringing this down, we're gonna make sure that we're keeping a nice dynamic range in our photo. This section here is for controlling the vignette and rather than working in a positive direction, more often than not, I'm taking this down so that we can focus our viewer's attention more towards the center of the frame. Now this is an interesting little dial here. It controls the saturation and the vibrance all in one. So as we move this around, you can see how that changes. If we go to the right, the saturation goes up, to the left, saturation is down, and then up and down controls the vibrance. So if you head towards the top right of the tool, you're gonna to push the saturation and vibrance both higher, come to the bottom left, you're gonna create more of a monochrome black and white image. But that is not the way I would recommend that we work with black and white. There is a specific tool all the way down here at the bottom, but we're gonna to come to that. So I'm just gonna double click to reset that color tool because I don't wanna oversaturate this. It's very easy for these powerful tools to accumulate and actually push your edit too far very quickly. So for example, Structure AI, very powerful tool. It adds a lot of detail and clarity intelligently through your photo, but if you go too far, it's too much. Um, and we can actually even take this to the negative direction. So if I wanted a softer look through this photo, I can 100% drop this down into the negative territory and still I'll be able to bring back detail just in these lovely pillars, which are the remnants of an old pier that washed away a long time ago. 
Those of you that are familiar with Luminar Neo will recognize Relight AI. It's a way to control the brightness values of the near and the far components in our photo. So I can actually brighten up the foreground and darken down the background. And we also have this dial here, which allows us to make the brightness recede or come closer in our photo. It just changes the transition point between these two bright levels. So we can really fine tune our brightness in our photo. In the landscape section just below, we've got some really useful tools. This one, not so much for this photo. This is the foliage enhancer, but if you've got a lot of greens in your photo and want to enhance them, that will do that for you. This slider is probably my favorite in this section. We can add fog or a bit of atmosphere into our photos, great for landscapes, or if we already have fog in our scene and we want to cut through it, we can activate dehaze by bringing this down. So I can really enhance and clarify this photo. The third effect from this triad of tools is golden hour. So as we push that up, it's gonna warm up our image and just give it that feel like it was shot kind of when this photo was shot anyway. So again, we can see our before and our after by turning on or off the power button and we can collapse our tools to keep things nice and organized if we want to. So I can come in, close down Relight AI, Structure AI, Enhance AI, and the Develop tool as well, just to keep nice and organized. Now I mentioned before bringing back some detail into these pillars because I softened this image by actually going negative with Structure AI. So by actually activating our small details, and you can see what's happening here as I boost that up, we start to introduce all that detail there while it doesn't really affect the sky or the sea. So that's actually a really nice way to add details. Personally, I don't like to actually push this very far because if you combine the small, the medium, and the large details, things can go pretty crazy pretty quick. So if you are adding these into your photo, just go easy with them. Double tap to reset them just like with any tool. But this is a great slider right here. This is the sharpen tool, and I'm pretty sure this is borrowing from Luminar Neo's excellent sharpening algorithm, because even pushing this quite high, quite aggressively with 64, and we toggle the before and the after, you can see that that really adds a nice level of sharpening to this photo. Now I'm really pleased to see the inclusion of curves in Luminar because this is the ultimate way to control the contrast in your photo. So adding a nice S curve, that's some beautiful contrast right there, but you don't just have to add contrast. We can actually reduce it and boost the shadows. We can double click these to get rid of them. And then we could do a mid-tone boost if we just wanna brighten things up. You've got a lot of control with curves. So it's so great to see that in here. We also can access individual color channels. So if I wanted to remove some of the blue from the highlights, I can bring that down. And if we wanted to balance that with the addition of blue into the shadows, look at that. We can do some great color grading with curves alone. So here's our before, here's our after. Might not be the look you're going for, but I just wanted to demonstrate that you can do that here with curves. But there is a better way to color grade. And we do that by accessing this tool over here, which gives us all of these lookup tables, but they're kind of uh, beautifully disguised as film canisters with the names on. So again, it's a really nice visual way to work. So we can just go through these, tap them, see which one we like. And we've got this lovely retro analog dial here, which allows us to dial in the amount that we want from this. Again, we have our numeric representation over here, so we can keep an eye exactly where it is, but this dial itself is just really fun to use. And so you can find the look that you're after. I quite like Athena for this particular one, but nowhere near 95%. Let's bring it all the way down, I don't know, somewhere around 35. I've over-processed this, I know. I just wanted to show you what this can do. But if I hold on the photo, we'll see our original and release for our very over-processed version. So I'm just gonna dive straight back in here and just reduce some of these effects. Something like that's a bit more subtle. Now, before I go and export this and upload it to social media or anything like that, I might want to just clean up some of these prints in the sand. And a really great way to do that is just by grabbing the Erase tool and we can paint directly over these. 
Luminar will do a little calculation and then get rid of that. You can see it's thinking at the moment and how long this takes will depend on the power of your own iPad. We can change the size of the brush that we're using so that we can be a lot more specific about what we're cleaning up and how far you go with it is entirely up to you. Now, once you've finished your photo and you want to export it, it's really easy to do that. You just come over to the share. We can either save it to our photos or share it online with any of the apps that you have loaded. We could email it, whatever we want to do. But if you are sharing to the likes of Instagram or Facebook, you may want to do a specialized crop first. So within our crop tool, we can reduce the size of the crop and keep that constrained to the original ratio. Or alternatively, we can come down to this icon here and actually choose to have a more Instagram friendly crop. Alternatively, if you want to free form your crop, you can absolutely do that and move that around. If you haven't quite nailed your horizon, we can just drag on the side of the photo to make sure that's corrected. We also can just click that icon there and Luminar is going to do its best to try and straighten the horizon. But I prefer to do this manually because that's one thing where it doesn't always do the best job, to be honest. We can also flip our photo if we want to. We can also rotate it. So you've got a lot of options here within the cropping tool. I photographed this farmhouse pretty much in the middle of nowhere for an architect and the day I was there I couldn't control the weather, unfortunately very grey skies, and he wanted to see what I was getting while I was on site. So I've just done a quick edit with Luminar on the iPad, got the property looking pretty good, but I'm not concerned about what the sky looks like because now I just want to show you how we can utilise SkySwap AI to switch out those dull skies for something better. So we come over to the sky icon here, which gives us access to the sky library. So I can switch out this rather boring and mundane photo so I can get this back to the architect and demonstrate what this photo may look like by the time I've finished doing a full edit. We just click the sky that we think might be a good fit for the photo. If it doesn't quite work, we can try another one. And let's just suppose we're happy with this. What we can now do is actually move the position of the sky. We don't have the hugest amount of control, but you can see how by grabbing this joystick and moving it around, the sky is actually going to change position. Now, these are all brand new skies for Luminar on the iPad. They look really nice, but you are going to get tired of these pretty quickly. So what I would recommend you doing is actually introducing your own skies, which you can do via this icon down here. Now, I nearly forgot before I didn't show you monochrome. So I'm just going to jump back into the develop tools here and close down this very quick edit that I did before. And at the very bottom here, you can see that we have access to monochrome. So you can see as I slide this over, we convert to black and white very nicely, very quickly. But the great thing is we can access the different color channels. And depending what color channel we put that on, we're going to get a slightly different black and white conversion. So to get the best result, you just need to find the black and white look that you like. You can then come in and fine tune things with, I don't know, a bit more contrast from curves. And that is how you work with black and white. So if I tap on the image to show our original and then I release, you can see just how quickly we can make a significant change to our photos. So you should have realized by now, while Luminar for iPad shares a lot of common ground, a lot of the really great technology from Luminar Neo, it is not Luminar Neo. It is designed to run on a less powerful device and therefore there are certain compromises and features that cannot be inside Luminar for iPad that we're lucky enough to have in Luminar Neo. So yeah, we've got SkySwap AI, we've got Enhance AI, Structure AI, a lot of those great tools. However, one thing that is not there, point number one, you cannot work with layers. It's not a layer driven photo editor, just the same as Lightroom isn't. So that may or may not be an issue for you. For years, I did like 95% of my processing in Lightroom without any need for layers. So if you're a purist and you just want to edit photos, it's going to be great for that. But if you want to be more creative with layers, then perhaps this isn't the right app for you. Now, point number two that you need to be aware of is that Luminar on the iPad is not a raw editor. It is only going to be working with your JPEG files. So if you're wanting to benefit from using this editor while you're out and about, make sure you're shooting raw plus JPEG so that you can do your quick edits on your iPad, get those turned around, and you can save those more grunty edits for when you get back inside Luminar Neo on your proper PC, Mac, laptop, whatever.
point number three that you need to be aware of, and you probably noticed this, there is no masking. Now, when I first learned this myself, I was actually pretty disappointed because if you follow my work on my channel, you will know that I love diving in deep, masking things, local adjustments, all of that good stuff. However, the more I've used this on the iPad, I kind of realized how freeing it is not to have to worry about local masking and the fact that we have Enhance AI that actually analyzes our photo and intelligently makes changes to certain areas of our photo. And I don't actually have to worry about going deep into the weeds. I can always save that for when I get back in front of the computer and take that edit to a higher level. However, not having to worry about it, but still getting a good result on the iPad is actually a really freeing thing. But if you are obsessed with masking and you absolutely have to have that for your editing, then again, maybe Luminar on the iPad isn't the right solution for you and your workflow. So does having Luminar on my iPad mean that I can unshackle myself from the desk, disappear off into nature, take photos and edit them out there forevermore? Well, unfortunately not. For my serious photo editing, I am still going to be relying on the power of my computer in conjunction with the likes of Luminar Neo so I can really finesse my results. However, the genius of having Luminar on my iPad means that I can just get quick edits done, turned around um, and get them back to my clients quickly or upload images to social media that I'm just jazzed about or that I've only just taken. And for me, that is a really freeing aspect and I love that. So for me, this works. So I'll be adopting Luminar on the iPad as part of my workflow, but that doesn't mean it's right for you. So what I would recommend is there is a free seven day trial available from the link in the description below. Get yourself the free trial, try it out, see if you like it, see if it's right for what you do with your editing. If it is, great guns. If it's not, no dramas. The version that I trialed in this video and shared with you is the beta version. I expect things could move pretty quickly and could evolve pretty quickly. But if you've got questions about anything that I've shared today, I'll try and answer them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.